Back at AP Review, this is 2011 Form B, A, B, B, C, free response 5. Ben rides a unicycle, good for you, Ben, back and forth along a straight east-west track. The twice differentiable function B models Ben's position on the track, measured in meters from the western end of the track at time t, uh, measured in seconds, from the start of the ride. The table above gives values for B of t and Ben's velocity, V of t, measured in meters per second at selected times. Use the data in the table to approximate Ben's acceleration at time t equals 5. Uh, indicate units of measure. So uh, real quick timeout, should have mentioned this as I always do when we have a table problem. Even though this table has multiple layers of table, when you're handed a table problem, you're probably going to be asked to estimate a derivative of something on the table by finding the slope between two points, and you're probably going to be asked to estimate an integral of something on the table by approximating area using trapezoidal LRAM, RRAM, or MRAM. Knowing that ahead of time makes it a lot easier. And sure enough, in part A, I'm asked to approximate a derivative using slope. So part A asks me to approximate A of 5, right? Well, that's the same as V prime of 5. So if I were trying to find the approximate slope at 5, what I'd have to do is use uh, two points around 5, right? Well, the only two points that are even possibly credibly around 5 are 0 and 10. So I'm going to use v of 10 minus v of 0 over 10 minus 0, right? So that's going to be a 2.3 minus a 2 all over a 10, right? Which would be 0.3 divided by 10, so that's 0 0.03. Sorry, I'm going to inch this over so you can see it. Now, because v is meters per second, this is meters per second per second, or the way you'll usually see that is meters per second squared, right? Uh, cool. Part B, using the correct units, interpret the meaning of the integral from 0 to 60 of v of t dt in the context of this problem. Approximate uh, the integral from 0 to 60 of v of t dt using a left Riemann sub with the subintervals given by the table. Well, again, that's the second thing I told you would probably happen in, in this problem. So, uh, so this is integrating the, sorry, my bad, uh, from 0 to 60, uh, if you integrate v of t, you're integrating velocity. But if you integrate the absolute value of v of t, you're integrating speed. And what that gives is the total distance in meters, right? So the total distance in meters traveled by Ben in, uh, in that 60 seconds. So he's only on the unicycle, at least according to our records, for 60 seconds, and that's the total distance that he's traveled, right? Um, and that's what they want us to explain, right? Uh, in that 60 second interval or in that 60 seconds. Um, so, uh, or you could say from time t equals 0 to 60, right? So if you want to make it clear that you're talking about a time interval, you could say interval, or you could say from t equals 0 to t equals 60 seconds, or during the, the minute that he is on his unicycle, or I don't know, find a clever way to say it, it's fine. Uh, I'd stick with 60 seconds, but... Um, uh, uh, so that's 60 second interval. Again, t is 0 to t is 60. All right, uh, cool. Uh, pa, then I'm supposed to actually approximate it, right? So now they, they always, when they ask you to do area approximation, they will tell you which kind of area approximation. This one says a left Riemann sum. So again, so far, b of t has meant nothing to me. I only want v of t. So my left Riemann sum, right, is going to be I'm going to take the width of each box, right, so the width of 10, and then I'm going to use the left of the two y values, which in this case would be a 2, right? And again, the y value in here is on the v of t chart, right? Plus, I'm going to take the width of the next box, which would be 30, because it goes from 10 to, to 40, and then I take the left of the two y values, which is going to be 2.3, right? And then I'm going to take the width, which is 20, from 40 to 60, and then the left of the two values, which would be the 2.5, right? So that's going to be a 20, right? So this would be a 6.9, but you tack on a 0, so it's a 69, right? Uh, and this would be, uh, it would be a 5, but then you tack on a 0, so it's a 50. So I have 70 and 69, so I should get 139 meters. So this thing is approximately 139 meters. That's how far, that's a lot of, that's a lot of unicycling, Ben. Good job. All right, part C. Uh... For the window from 40 to 60, there must be a time when Ben's velocity is 2 meters, or sorry, must there be a time when Ben's velocity is 2 meters per second? Justify your answer. So as soon as you're asked a must question, like must there be such and such, that's almost always about a theorem. And when we're talking about theorems in calc, there are kind of four big ones. Uh, 
But the two big ones that we see a lot when we talk about must statements are either the mean value theorem, which says that average slope must equal instantaneous slope, meaning uh, the difference quotient y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 has to equal uh, like f prime or whatever prime, right? Uh, the other, so that's one, and that's for functions that are continuous and differentiable. The other one that you're going to see is the intermediate value theorem, which says that if you have some value, if you have a continuous function and you want to know if something has to equal this arbitrary number, if on the interval you're given, the function starts below this number and ends above this number, then because the function's continuous, it had to cross. Or if on that interval, the function starts above that number and ends below that number, then again, because the function's continuous, it had to cross that number at some point. So it's probably either an IVT or a mean value theorem problem. We're going to take a look and see which. Because we have both B of T and V of T, it could arguably be either. So um, they said V of T has to be 2 meters per second. If so, why? Okay, so if this, if this is the mean value theorem, right, if it's the mean value theorem, and they did tell us all these functions are continuous and differentiable, then that would mean that the average, so remember, they're asking, would, so they're asking us to show that V of T which is the same as b prime of t, right? The derivative of the position would have to be 2. So if it's the mean value theorem, on the window from, from 40 to 60, what they want us to show is that b of 60 minus b of 40 over 60 minus 40 would have to equal whatever b prime is, right? And if this comes out to be a 2, then this is the theorem they're looking for. If it doesn't come out to be a 2, then I would probably check and see if the intermediate value theorem, well, we, I can show you right now why the intermediate value theorem is not the answer. I'll show you in a sec. So, if I did b of 60, which is 49, minus b of 40, which is 9, over a 20, I'm going to get that that's a 40 over 20, which is a 2. So the answer is, sorry, it's not a 2, I wrote a b. Uh, so the answer is yes. By the mean value theorem, yes, uh, 2 has to equal v of t at some point. Now here, just to show you, if this had been an intermediate value theorem problem, it's not. Okay, so, so in this problem, it's not the intermediate value theorem. But here's how I can see that. If I were trying to show that v of t had to be 2 in this window, I would look at v of 40, right? But v of 40 is greater than 2. And I would look at v of 60 and see, oh, it's also greater than 2, so the mean value theorem doesn't apply. If one of these two values had been below 2 and the other one was above 2, then I could use the IVT. Because it says if you start below the number 2 and end above the number 2, then you have to cross the number 2. Uh, or vice versa, start above and end below. So again, the IVT does not apply here, but just to show you, when you hear must something be true, it's almost always the mean value theorem or the intermediate value theorem, almost always. Uh, so those are two big ones to know walking into your calc test. All right, uh, part D. Uh, the lights, uh, sorry, a light is directly above the western end of the track. Ben rides such that at time t, the distance L of t between Ben and the light gives this equation. So uh, so in part D, L of t quantity squared equals 12 squared plus B of t quantity squared. Uh, at what, oh, here you go, related rates. At what rate is the distance between Ben and the light changing at t equals 40? So when we do related rates, right, this is that dread saw thing. We usually draw a diagram and label rates. But here there's no point because we already were given the equation, which is really the whole goal of the diagram and the rates. I'm then going to derive the equation with respect to t, right? So, so what they want in this problem, right, they want... Uh, what rate is the distance between Ben and the light, which we called L of t? So they want L prime of 40. They want the rate at which L is changing, which would be L prime, at 40. That's the thing they want. So let's go ahead and derive this thing with respect to time and see what happens. This is a chain rule. It's going to be 2 L of t times L prime of t, right? Because uh, 2 L of t to the first, technically, if you need that, but that's the idea. When I derive the 12 squared, it's gone, so that's nice. And then the B of t derivative is going to go the same way. It's going to be plus 2 times B of t to the first times the derivative of B, right? Cool. So if I want, I can solve for this guy, right? Um, this is the thing that I want. My argument is that I know everything else. You might not think I know everything else, but I do. So, like, not everything in the world, but I know this. So I know what B of 40 is, right? So when I go to substitute in, I'm going to get 2 times L of 40, right, times this thing. And this is definitely the thing I'm solving for, right? This is the thing I want 
equals 2 times b of 40 times b prime of 40. Well, here's the thing. b of 40 is on the table. It's a 9, right? So b of 40 is a 9, right? b prime is the same as v. So b prime of 40 is a 2.5, right? And you might say, oh, but you don't know uh, L of 40. But I would argue that I do know L of 40 because if I go back to this original equation that I was given for L, right? So I'm going to uh, inch this a little bit over. So I know that this would give me a way to find L of 40. L of 40 quantity squared equals a 12 squared plus B of 40, which we have established is a 9 squared. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. Honestly, if I were you, I might just recognize that this is definitely a 3, 4, uh, 5 Pythagorean triangle, right? 3 times 3, 3 times 4. This is going to be 3 times 5. This bad boy is totally a 15. Uh, but if you don't see that, that's fine. L of 40 quantity squared is going to be a 144, right, uh, plus an 81, which is totally a 225. And when you square root it, you're going to get that L of 40 is plus or minus 15, but in the context of this problem, it wouldn't make any sense for it to be a negative 15, uh, right? Because uh, specifically, this is the distance between things. Uh, so I'm, I, they're going to make this a positive 15, right? So this is a 15, right? Because it's the, it's the physical distance. It's not a displacement. It's how far he is from something. So this guy's a 15. So all you have to do is solve for L prime of 40. So when I solve, I'm going to get that L prime of 40 equals 2 times 9 times 2.5 over a 2 times a 15. Now, you might think, hey, you know, I'm totally just going to go ahead and cancel those 2s. I'm going to argue I don't want to deal with the 2.5. I'd much rather deal with a 5. So I end up getting uh, the, the top is a 9 times a 5, right, which is a 45 over a 30. I can cancel a 15 out of that, and I get that this is 3 halves. Uh, and because L prime, L was measured in meters, uh, and the time here is in seconds, so it should be meters per second. And that's the end of the problem.